Hi, in this video, I'd like to talk about the software development cycle, specifically in the context of Python. So we've already seen how to write and run the Hello World program. So in this case, we use an IDE. Um, hopefully, most of you are using PyCharm to write the code, print Hello World in its editor. So that's the first step in the development cycle is that we use an editor to write the source code for Python and the Python source code it's always in a file that ends at .py okay and once we have Python source that we are happy with we will run it and um, this is the output of the run so that's the next step is to send the file through a Python interpreter that it and which runs it now this run step is actually two steps in one so the first step what actually happens is the compilation process the dot py python source is actually compiled into what's called a bytecode um, bytecode is something that is not exactly human readable it's it's something that is um, more easily understood and executed by the Python interpreter. And then the next step is after the compilation is actually the execution or the run step. And the Python interpreter will again run the py the bytecode to um, to do whatever. Um, the, the bytecode tells it to do. So because this compilation step is most of the time it's hidden from the Python programmer, so Python is generally not considered a compiled language and because behind the scene it is actually compiled, so Python it isn't quite an interpreted language either, um, even though you probably hear more often than not that Python is an interpreted language. But either way, um, whether it's a compiled language or interpreted language, that's not important to us. What we have to keep in mind is just that the source code can be run by the Python interpreter. So a couple other things I want to point out here is going back to this bytecode. So what this bytecode is, is kind of a halfway between um, the Python source code, which we, the human, write, and the low-level machine code that the um, actual uh, CPU executes. So that's and so bytecode is what's called hardware independent, meaning that it can be run on either, say, a Windows machine or or a Mac. OS machine um, and so they run in virtual hardware rather than a real hardware and another thing is well the bytecode it can be put into a separate file that ends in .pyc which I guess stands for compiled Python code but we most of the time well at least for the foreseeable future we won't see a separate .pyc file that contains the bytecode because um, we will mostly deal with a single Python source file, at least for a while. And where there's only one file, um, the compiled bytecode is not written out to a separate file. Now, once we have the result of running our Python source file, then we'll look at the output and check whether it is something that we expect. Now, in this case, it is then we are basically done now this is a simple one line program right more often than probably not in the future is that when your program runs it probably does something that's not quite exactly what you expect it to do in that case you would have to go back to the editor well you might examine the output think about what could have gone wrong and once you know what could have gone wrong maybe you go back to the editor and fix it or if you don't understand 
exactly what go what have gone wrong then maybe you would add more code to tell you what your program is doing in the hope of finding out what the error might be so that would be this extra step here that will go back to the editor edit the code modify the code hopefully fix the error run it again again check the output again and then this cycle uh, would continue until we are completely satisfied with the correctness of our code. So that's why this is a cycle. Now we are going to be doing a little forward looking now because well so far we've written a very simple program it does exactly what it what we wanted to do. Now in the future as I just mentioned we could run into errors and so what I want to quickly look at is the type of error that we might run into and generally there are three categories the first is syntax error the second error is runtime error and then the last category of errors would be just incorrect behaviors so let's look at each of them in a little more detail so first syntax error well here it says syntax error happens when the code is compiled into bytecode well actually not quite most of the modern um, IDEs such as PyCharm it will tell you about syntax error as you type the code so syntax error could include things like misspell the name of a function so for example if I spell print with the two T's well you immediately see that PyCharm flag it for us with a red wiggly underline of the word print t right and if you move your mouse cursor over it and you can read the error message here it says unresolved reference well for now it might seem a little cryptic but basically what it's telling you is that it doesn't know what print t is well because it's it's not something that has been defined so that's and if you fix it immediately um, the PyCharm is going to tell you okay well you know there's no more error and it knows that it is a built-in print function other potentially syntax error could be like you're missing a uh, the closing parentheses in this case um, you do see that little wiggly red line again and leave your mouse over there it will show it will say that hey you know it's expecting a close parentheses so again if you fix that it um, the error goes away and this kind of error they are usually obvious and they usually should be easy to fix if you read the description of the error very carefully like what I just showed you and obviously it also might take a little bit of experience to 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 figure out what some of the error messages might say the next type of errors is called the runtime errors so instead of errors that you see in your editor these are the errors that you might run into when you actually run the program and the python interpreter would usually hopefully show you some sort of descriptive error message or uh, it will throw what's called exceptions but um, let's not worry about exceptions right now so I can quickly show you an example of a runtime error so I'm going to do a um, division by zero and you, as you know we cannot divide a number by zero now that is not a syntax error right one divided by zero the editor is not going to bark about that however when you actually run the program we'll see something that is uh, red and if you again if you look at the error message carefully you might actually see hey it says division by zero so um that something is wrong there and it actually show you which line of code that does that so that's an example of a runtime error you're going to see more um, when we write more complicated programs that does more complicated operations 
so um it, they might or may not be obvious so it depends kind of depends on what what the code or what you're trying to do what at the time that the error actually occurs the final type of error that we're going to run into is that the program doesn't do what you want it to do so for example if i run this very simple code it prints out hello world d okay well so there's no syntax error there's no runtime error however it doesn't print out the word world the word world correctly right so we have to go back to our source code and see oh well actually in the string literal we misspell that word so we can fix it right there now that is obviously a very trivial example the more inc the incorrect behavior that we're going to run into are going to be probably a, a lot worse than that so for example in the example where we were looking for page 100 million in a book with a billion pages what could happen in that case is it might run but doesn't find the page even though you know page 100 million should be in the book with a billion pages another potential incorrect behavior is that it runs but instead of finding the page 100 million it finds 100 million and one you're just off by one okay and finally um, another example of incorrect behavior is it, it just keeps running and running and running forever it doesn't finish so you will uh, run into errors like that and those are the incorrect behaviors that um, um, you might have to look into and try to fix and it depends on exactly what what the problem might be it could be easy to spot where in the code something goes wrong or it might be very very hard to figure out what goes wrong so um, when we run into problems like that we'll just have to be very careful we just have to work very hard and we have to do a lot and a lot of coding and looking for problems in our code so experiences would certainly also help in figuring out the root cause of incorrect behaviors in our code now having explained the three categories of errors in code i want you to know that we generally do not refer to errors in code as errors we actually call them bugs and the process of fixing them is called debugging which is something that we're going to be doing a lot so i would like you to know where the term um, bug actually came from and that is the story of grace hopper who is one of the early and, and pioneering female programmers and i found a youtube video that explained how she came to coin the term bug so it's well worth watching and also um, i think there are other videos on youtube that actually interview grace hopper herself um, and that that's also um, on the same story so um, i'm not going to show it here but um, put, uh, you have the url in the, in this slide or in, in this video so uh, please uh, go ahead and watch it